Welcome to Let's Play Mountain Blade Warband The Floris Mod. Today I want to show you one of the greatest games I ever played. I played this game for a long time. The normal Mountain Blade, the Mountain Blade War Mod, Warband, the Mountain Blade Warband Game of Thrones mod and different other mobs, uh, mods, uh, mobs, no, mods and one of the best I've encountered is La Floris Mod. And that's the reason I want to show you this, because I think great games should be shown and should be played by people like us. Well, first of all, what is to say, this is a medieval game, there's no magic here, no dragons, no things like that. There are mods where there is magic, this is one where there's no magic. This is pure medieval action. Well, it's not only action, it's economics, it's RPG, it's tactics, it's strategic, you'll see. I will show you one by one. First thing I want to show you, which is very rare on the Let's Plays about this game, I'm trying it on normal, normal, good, good. Trust me, the normal is this one. Yeah? We are not doing that. We're doing that on normal. And the normal is poor combat IE and campaign IE, and we're doing good. So, so please. Do not call me a moron if I lose the first fights. When we start, we have no idea about fighting. And fighting is very hard and very unforgiving here. I will have to go to great lengths to even start a real campaign or to start a good battle. Not speaking of winning a battle, but we'll try. We start a new game extra for you guys. So, first, this is the character creation. This is a wonderful creation technique. First, you decide what your father is. This determines, as far as I know, your starting gear. I take an improvised noble. Why? Because you get a good horse. And a horse is like a good life insurance. The only difference is a life insurance is good for the people that come after you. A horse is a life insurance that keeps you from dying. Well. Then we take a noble in training. Why do we do that? Because we need leadership. Leadership is like leadership or command in Eador or in um, King's Bounty. It determines how many troops we can have and it determines how much they cost. Their weekly wages, you know, their payment. Um, we try to keep that as high as possible. There are many different skills. I will tell you about each of them when it's time. So. What are we be, What are we about a profession? We are slave trader. Why? Because we get three points in slave management. Every point in slave management enables you to keep five slaves. Why is that good? Because if we beat someone in combat and we do not kill him, we can take him as a slave and sell him. That's a good way to get money. Our reason for advancer is sense of duty because it gives more leadership. Riding determines what types of horses you can ride and how fast. Weapon master, how good you are with weapons and how fast you learn them. Power strike, how much damage you do with melee weapons. And tactics, how many troops you can bring into battle at once. We have a starting coin, 200 gold. Well, we have a renown, 150. This is quite high. This comes from the noble and noble in training. We have... Uh, 100 weapons 70 this goes from 0 to 500 200 weapons pole arms bows crossbows and throwing weapons we use the expanded troop key we'll see seen soon now why and we start in the kim kingdom of Swedia. i will show you why later i want to have this as thrilling as possible for you guys and so i take realistic no saving yeah we give it a name after the famous Lord of Navarro and we put all our power and strength. Why? Because we must wear the best armor available to keep us alive and we need the most life points. Trust me, any point gives you one life point. We are great we are greatly thankful for every life point we have. There is no magical healing here. The weapons do immense damage. Every life point is gold worth. We take power strike as po as high as possible we take power draw as possible you see for every point in power draw we do 14 percent more damage that's wonderful and high and we take one point in shield so that we can use shields all our points we take in archery why because archery is a skill that keeps us alive that's our main battle at, at the beginning 
We have tactics too, we can't use this much, and the other skills we will not take. There are three different types of skills. There are personal skills, they only work for you. There are party skills, the character with the highest score will, have, will determine the score for the party. If you have more then you, your skill will, will be the one who is used and if one of your companions has looting too, for example, he will add his bonus to yours, not in full but in partial. Um, and there are skills that only the leader we use. This is persuasion, uh, prison management, leadership and I think there's one more here, inventory management. Well, but for the starts we have out of two out of three at very high levels. This goes from one to ten and so this will have to do. So now we look how we look. That's very silly sounding but that's the case. Well some here is good, too much here is not good. I think that's okay. I don't mind about the face. I hope we get a helmet soon. So you can read the starting story. It's not quite that impressive just sees that we will now encounter someone in the streets. I will try to show you the combat system and still trying to do some damage. I'm quite sure we will not win the first battle because the beginning. We have a bow. You see us here. We can wriggle around and now we start shooting at that one and using cover. If you start with the bow shooting, you see you can aim We hit him. We actually hit him. I did not expect us to hit him, to be real honest. Oh, he's up to us. And we got him down! Unbelievable! That's the fighting system. Right mouse button block, left mouse button hit. 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 Block. Hit. Block. Well, that's how it goes. There are many different weapons. Now comes someone who is impressed by our fighting and he's very proud of us and he says we can help him. His brother was taken away, was taken hostage and he says, well, take you some man, get my brother back and I'll pay you. We say, oh, we're interested and he says, I give you 100 dinars for starters that you can buy troops. We say, wonderful. That's his house. We cannot take anything with us here, but that's not important. We can look around a little, but you will see there's nothing here. And by using the tab key, we'll go out of the, the city. And now you see our playing ground. This is the strategic map. Every big letters here are for a uh, city. The small letters are for towns. Uh, for castles and little villages. Items can be sold, taverns can be used and things like that in the big cities. In the small villages you can recruit troops and buy food and get quests. In the fortresses you can uh, visit lords and get quests. Well and uh, they will be part of conquerors in the future. Different colors means different kingdoms. These colors will change as these kingdoms are at war with each, with each other. These white things are training camps. We will come to that very, very soon. Well, at the moment we are near Praven. One thing more about the terrain. If we encounter enemies in the woods, we will fight in woodlands as it comes to a fight. In plains vis-a-vis -vis. mountains, well, the same. We can move around by clicking by the mouse and when we stop moving the game stops. So this is not the problem that it goes hectic. Everything's okay so far. We can look around and now we will get to Praven. You see Praven is defended. King Harlow's party, the king of this kingdom of Sweden is here with 289 troops. And the Praven itself has 250 troops and um, in the I do not know who you, how do you call this um, 
color, but you see the troops. Swedish Guard, Mercenary Page, Swedian Pikineer, Swedian Chalk, Swedian Longbowman, whatever. There are millions of troops here. And this is the wonderful part of this game. Well, there are many wonderful parts of this game, but this is one of the great, I think. This is our camp. We can take an action, like reading a book, if we had one, modify our banner. Well, we have no banner at the moment, but we'll take the Phoenix. I like the Phoenix. I like that one too, because Game of Thrones, but that's another story. Um, we can change the map colors for us. We can export or import characters. We can retire, which we don't do, or we can do back to camp. We can split the troops, if we had them. We can spend some time here. We can inspect our camp, looking around. We can entrench our camp for better defense, if we are under attack, and we look at the mob, mod options. The reports. We can get reports about everything you can imagine. At the moment, these reports are no good for us, because we do not have an army. But I can show you something. We can look at all items, and believe me, these are tons of items. Yeah, These are only the one-handed weapons. Any questions? Or, for example, the two-handed weapons. Every weapon has stats. A name, a type, a buying price, a white. Uh, heavy, um, the heavier the weapon is, the more are you encumbered. If you are encumbered too much, you cannot move very fast, and your skills will decrease. Every weapon have have a attack type, swing for example, or trust, or swing and trust. That's how the weapon can be used. A damage, 11 up to, well, depends on the weapon, but quite high. If a 200 weapon, for example, here, 47, 100 weapon, 11. And a damage type, B is for blunt. It's very important for us, because it does not kill the people and makes them able to... Be conquer, uh, to be enslaved. There is cutting and pierce ring. Well, that's good if you're up against armor. Depends on the type of the armor you're up against. It has a speed rating, how fast you can attack in combination with your weapon skill and a weapon reach. Very important. The guy with a bigger reach normally strikes first. Well, that's for the weapons. Some weapons have extras like bonus against shields or they require a special strength. This should not be our problem. The same goes for armor. There are millions of armor types. And now comes one of the bad things, troop parts. These are troop trees. For example, if we buy the normal Swedish peasant idiot, huh, we can develop him on this tree where we like. If we stay, let him stay alive, how to do that later, we can train him where we want. And there are many trees and many different troops. You can call yourself lucky if you encounter half of these troops through your whole game. Even the outlaws, if this game changes. Huh? A slaver chief. There's even an elephant here. Marvelant, isn't it? So, Mountain Bandit, for example. Very, very uncool. Forest Bandit. Look at this. Level 18, they got bows, not good for us. Looters, they've got rocks, well that's not our problem. Mountain bandits, they have even got crossbows. Can it get any worse? Manhunters, well, we'll see them for furthermore. Well, quests. At the moment, collect five men. You see, there are many more things. We'll see them later. Our inventory, what we have at the moment, we are very badly equipped, but we have only got 300 in us, so that won't change that fast. Our character screen, you already know that. Our skills from 1 to 500. Must I say more? I don't think so. And our party, at this moment, we have no troops, but we can have up to... 68 troops if we get them somewhere and we if we can pay them well we have one party skill that's tactics and now into the city first thing we can go to the castle speak to the king we can walk around in the streets for example looking around that is quite changes yeah isn't that a marvelous city we are in with our horse 
and here we can talk to the merchant or to the weaponsmith we can talk to the armorer we can even go to the prison but more of that later we can go to the tavern that's always a good idea I hope there's no drunk person here a ransom broker where we can sell things a traveler who will talk to us and tell us things of this world a fugger that's the person who gave us the order this is a mercenary four men he has we can only get one of him but we do not take them oh a viago looks like a longbow fighter to me with a parvesa that's not very likely normally only crossbowmen use as this parvesa shields uh, we cannot afford any of them it goes up there but at the moment you have no need to go up there because there can nobody be on there up there that is helpful of us and there's the tavern keeper where we can talk at quests vis-a-vis -vis what you know from the noble RPGs. The arena! Here we can train fighting and this is something we should do. He say, okay, three opponents, five dinars, ten dinars, if you strike six, and if we win we get 250. Good, eh? Well, guys, we have no chance here. To be real honest, we will be dead before we hit the deck. If we are lucky, when we can kill one guy before they're up to us. You see it? No chance. But at least we hit one and we can do it just again. And this time we take the 200 sword. The 200 sword is a very good weapon in my opinion. It's not as useful. Oh, okay. They got from the other side too. The arena is like, um, you know, battle tech, the stomping, I think it's called. All go in, one goes out. Well, that's something like that. I do not expect to win anything here, to be real honest. We're just trying to train a little bit. Because this game is hard and unforgiving. If we die outside, we may lose money, equipment or even worse. Yeah, come on. He got us. Oh, there's a bowman. But he does not know how to shoot. Well, then we try our luck with the bow again. I know 100 weapon and shield is normally very useful, but I'm not as good as with that. Well, and we're down again. Not very good, but we need the training. Okay, I try with the sword and shield for you one time, but I warn you, I'm not good with this. When you're up against ranged fighters, try not to move in a straight line. They, lock, they love this. I do not believe this. Well, the problem is they are quite fast because they do not have uh, the low agility stats I have. And for that reason, we do not stand much chances here. Well, one more thing you should know is armor counts where it's worn. And you can say what you want. If you're hit in the head, you're pretty much down. Even the best fighter is down if he's hit in the head. So if you're up against a very good op armed opponent, try to use your bow or whatever you have against his head. You see, headshot? Headshot gets them all. I do not want you to think that we can win this. We cannot. The 
level is far too high for winning these battles, but we can try to take some of them down before they take us down, but not if we shoot like this. Why am I hitting him? Because also he has a shield? Well, because a shield is only co only counts where it's worn. So they are using not the big shield so I can shoot as his, at his legs. And if I hit his legs, he takes damage, of course. So, the moment we run, we run out of arrows is the moment we run out of life. That is quite obvious. But I think we have at least some chance to get some money out of this. Maybe even 60 denarii? Oh, yeah, they do not move in a straight line. That's bad for us. Now, you see, in the arena, the number of targets increases over time. You see up in the left there is a counter how many we have slain and how many are left. There are some tactics I've seen on this place that some people wait for the enemy to cut themselves. They attack each other to cut themselves down. If you wait that long, if you run in circles for example, if your agility is high enough to run faster than they do, you may even win this but I would not count on it. So, we will be pretty much dead every second. We have only 10 arrows left. Well, you can say, why not take headshots? And they were down. Well, we did some good, didn't we? And we get 60 denarii! I say we try this again once. Oh, we're down again. Well, it's mainly the problem of that one behind us. But the spawning is random. We can have luck. And if we have luck, they do not spawn directly behind us. For example, this time no one has spawned rightly be right beneath us, behind us, so we stand a chance this time, at least to get some of the enemies down before they get us down. And I will try my very best to not to disappoint you. We need the training. The higher our skill in um, archery is, the more our arrows will hit where we aim. The problem with bows is, the longer you hold the key, the... Oh, we rise the level. That's wonderful. Not as useful as you might think, but... Oh, boy. Can still do this. Um, you see, every time we shoot, we get a little XP in bow fighting, bow shooting. And so, we have a chance in this arena to get real good at what we do. Yes, he's moving sideways because he knows we cannot shoot at him that well. That's my tactics for fighting against bowmen. We do merely the same. I have leveled the KE to its maximum about intelligence. You see that? It's doing his best to kill us. That was... We could not had, have done this if we do not have that high power strike, uh, power draw. We are only doing that much damage because of the power draw. So... I think we'll have to stay in the arena for some time because before we get out into the bad, bad world, 
we need some training. Oh, seen that? He blocked it with his shield. But we hit him. Always aim for the legs. There are very good players who are able to aim for the head. I'm not that good. Sadly, I must admit I'm not that good. He is getting nearer. When someone uses his shield in front of him, he slows down. So that is your chance. Now this is our end, I think. Not yet. Oh, we can still take some down. Well, now we're down. But we earned another 60 gold uh, dinari. Well, I'm leaving now to show you something else. The marketplace. There are different types of dealers, arms dealers, armor dealers, horse dealers and goods dealers. With goods you can trade, with horses you can ride, with armors you can protect yourself and with arms, well, you can kill other people. What we need and what we are looking for at the beginning is cheap things. As cheaper as better. So, what do we need? We need a lance. Because we are very good at lancing, I hope. Well, second, we need more arrows, because we will run out of arrows very fast. We cannot afford that. Well, that's bad. We must do some more some more uh, arena fighting. This is armor. There's very good armor if you compare this to ours. And this is a great price for armor. Uh, armor that good to that price you will not find very often. I've never seen an armor that good for that price to be real honest. We cannot afford it of course. But this is a wonderful armor for that price. You see we have a very bad head protection. We need far better head protection if we want to survive. And we need far better body protection if we want to survive. We need everything better if we want to survive. Our horse is quite good. It's good armored. It has a good speed. It's quite maneuverable. It does good charge damage. You know, riding over someone and doing him damage. And it has good hit points. Well, not as good as this one, of course. But... Compared to that what can be bought, this horse is worth nearly 3,000 bucks. And that's quite good, isn't it? The other horses are not that good, and we cannot afford them anyway. Here's food. If you have an army later, you will need food to keep them happy and fit. And you can trade with the goods here. I'm not good at trading, to be real honest. We can talk to the guildmaster and get uh, quests or other things, lands or our own facilities to get some income over the time. And we can lend or buy money here and let people settle on it. That's also quite good for getting money. Or we can go to the port. This mod has a whole world of ships, sea battles and things like that. Another thing that makes this mod quite good. Well, that's for the moment. I see you next time.